My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. I'm a child of God. My number is this plus two three four eight one eight six one five seven eight five two. Welcome to my Facebook Live. And I'm sharing on what I've titled How Wives Are Made into sex slaves how wives are made into sex slaves even though i will be addressing wives specifically in a general context i'm actually speaking to women and speaking to the society at large <clears throat> Now, when a woman is married, when you have a man as a woman, as husband and wife, it is normal, it is honorable that they will engage in sex. But there is a concept about sex in the society that is destroying women and basically turning them into sex slaves. And I'm talking of married women. Even though the journey starts right from their singlehood. Now, the, the, what makes it worse, or what makes it worse is the fact that the church even contributes to this. That's the sad part. I will probably not have been too bothered if it was just something in the world, in the society. But what I'm about to share with you is something that we have pastors who even claim to be teaching about marriage who are promoting this wickedness. And to crown it all, Women are even in the forefront of this wickedness. I'm going to unravel all of this to get today. Now, what exactly are we talking about? There is a mindset. There is a programming for a girl child and a woman that is married that sex is not for her. Sex is for the man. How do they do this? I'm sure some of you will have had speakers, even female speakers, that will say that for women to be sexually attractive to their husband, they need to dress this way, they need to dress that way, they need to wear something sexy, they need to wear G-string, they need to wear B-string, F string, all kind of strings. I'm sure you have heard it. And my question is this. When did you hear any lecture on the things that the man needs to wear in order to be sexually attractive to the woman? That's the first issue. In other words, we are basically saying to women, and women are saying to themselves, and like I said, women are the ones that even share this kind of messages the most. They will put it on their status. They will put it on their walls. They are teaching women how to dress sexy to remain sexually attractive to their husband. But nobody is saying that the man that this is how the man needs to dress to remain sexually attractive to the woman. So essentially, what we are doing is that we are saying, woman, you see your sex is not for you, it is for the man. So the average woman has been so much brainwashed to believe that her sex is a favor to the man. And this is something women are teaching. Let's say something men are teaching. I'll say, okay, maybe it's still part of the chauvinistic nature of men. 
But this is something women are teaching other women. There are groups where women are teaching women what to wear. Look at even the foolishness of what they are teaching. A man, your husband, sees you naked. Your husband sees you naked. You are now saying that in order for the man to be attractive, again, you need to wear something sexy. What can be more sexier than nakedness? Is it not foolishness? Let me tell you, a man that you need to wear clothes to keep is not a man. No. Do you know the, the interesting thing? They are now saying to women that there are side chicks. I had to practice to know how to pronounce it. That there are side chicks. And those women have to improve their sexual life such that they can compete with those side chicks so that their husband does not go to side chicks. Let me point out all the things that are wrong in that. Number one, how come nobody is teaching men how to have sex in such a way that their wives will not go to side how do we call it now? You know, because when they say side chicks, that's for young girls outside. So how do we describe young men outside now? Is it side side hen or side fowl or side I don't even know. <laughs> Whatever side. But how come nobody is saying men, you, you too, this is all that you must do. So you now expect a woman who has given birth to three children, four children, at 45, to be able to have sex like an 18-year-old girl. What kind of nonsense is that? How come they are teaching women this nonsense? So she's no longer having sex to please herself in the, and her husband in, in home. She's now having sex in competition with young girls outside. They tell her to go and learn all the skills. And brethren, I had this on the pulpit. I said, if I didn't hear it on the pulpit, I will not be disturbed. I had it on the pulpit. Johnson Suleiman was saying the other day that a woman, he doesn't want to see a woman tie rapper. I'm like, what is your business if my wife ties rapper? Have I come to complain to you that I have problem with my wife tying rapper? If you don't want your own wife to tie rapper, tell your wife to wear what you want that will keep your eye. For me, I don't need my wife to wear anything to keep my eye in the home. I'm born again. My eye is kept by Jesus. It's not kept by G-string. It is not kept by push-ups. It is kept by the cross of Jesus. So what is it that you will now say that you have problem with a woman wearing wrapper in the home? What is it? So you see, they are just creating restlessness for women. Women are creating restlessness for themselves. And they believe it. I've seen women that will be trekking up and down in town because she must slim down. I said, what kind of husband did you marry that does not know that your body will change? That you just want to kill yourself. If you want to stay fit, it's understandable. So the whole body is on the, is on the woman. She must be the one who must do everything to please the man. The whole body is on her. And women gladly believe this. Do you know that the message where the pastor, there's a pastor in Lagos, where he said that women need to learn all the styles of the side chicks. I hope it's side chick. I'm struggling to get it right. Side chicks, okay? All the styles that... Women should learn it. 
Did you know that it was women who were sharing the video? Because he said, men will not go outside to cheat. Brethren, adultery is a sin. It has nothing to do with your wife. The Bible says, can a man take coal on his lap and not be born? It is not how your wife dresses. It is not whatever she does. It is you that you are going into sin. Let me say this to you, every woman. If you like, go and be wearing G string, F string, K string, double string. If you marry a husband that does not have the fear of God in his heart, he will commit adultery. If you like, learn all the sex type and become the Messi and Ronaldo of bed. A man without the fear of God in his heart, he will still go out. It is not your responsibility to keep a man from, from not sinning as a wife. That's not your responsibility. You need to keep your own self. He needs to keep himself. But they, are, they, they have so much imputed this thing into the psyche of women. And you know why? Many women are, are secretly frustrated sexually in marriage. You know why? Most men have sex when they want it. Most women have sex only when their husband wants it. Did you see the difference? Our body has chemistry. Our body has rhythm. So, as a woman, there is a, there is a period in the month when your body is at the threshold or, or the peak of sexual desire. If you have been so much brainwashed to believe that sex is for your husband, what do you do? You just stay put. And you will hope that that man will want sex at that time. If he doesn't want sex, you endure it. But for the man, when he wants sex, he comes out clear that he wants sex. It is, you know, wives, even in marriage, we still, they are still not bold enough to let their husband know expressly that they want sex. Some will still... They are still timid because they have put it inside of them that, see, this thing is for your husband. Though. So how are you going to experience your own peak of sexual desire when you only have sex when the man wants it? And so many men also have grown up to see it that this thing is for me. Give it to me. So whether the woman is frustrated, whether she's happy, whether she's satisfied, that is none of the business of many of our men. But I really want to say this to you. It is your business as a husband to please your wife. The Bible says, defraud ye not one another. He didn't say, wife, don't defraud your husband. He said, defraud ye not one another. So you can defraud your wife. What exactly is love? Love means you esteem another person other than you. You put the, the comfort, the pleasure of another person above your own. You make them priority over yourself. How come when it comes to sex, there is no love? And that's the one you call love making. It is what we call love making that has, that has no element of love. And yet we call it love making. Yet there is no element of love. In fact, selfishness is greatly expressed during love making. Because you are only concerned about yourself. So you need to change as a woman. Now, have I said that you should not dress to please your husband? No. That's not what I'm saying. Please, dress in a way 
that will gladden the two of you in marriage. I don't have problem with that. It's left for the two of you. But I will say to you, <laughs> except the Lord keeps the house, they labor in vain that watches over it. Except the fear of God is in your husband. He doesn't matter. Do you think that men commit adultery? Because you, do, you are not good in bed? Satan can fill their hearts if they have such issue. The devil can use it as a deceit, as a decoy to lure the man. To lure the man. And begins to suggest to him that you see that you are not happy sexually. Can't you just try these young ladies outside? But you see, the reason why he's going outside is not really because sex is not good in the house, it's because there is a sinful nature in him. Until the cross of Jesus deals with this sinful nature, woman. You will remain a slave. <laughs> you, will, you, will, you will struggle. There is nothing you do. This man, he will go out. Oh. No matter how much you try, you will go out. So you see that when they talk about sex slaves, your mind may be going to women that are kidnapped. Women that are held against their own will. Maybe by terrorists, for example. You know, they will kidnap women and keep them as sex slaves. They did it in Iraq. It's happening in Nigeria. And it, ha it happens in different parts of the world. But you see, don't think too far. It's happening right in the home. Where a woman is made to feel that her husband has 100% control over her body, but she has no control over her own body. And she has no control over the body of her husband. Yet, the scripture says that you are one body. Your body belongs to you and it belongs to the man. The man's body belongs to him and it belongs to you. So you must come out of this slavery mindset. You know, at times because we have talked so much about sexual sin, people are not able to make a difference, a separation between sex and sexual sin. Sex is a creation of God. Sex is beautiful. Sex is godly. Sex is clean. Sex is a gift. Sex is a blessing. Sex is a tool. Sex is by God. God only frowns at sexual sin. But sex in itself, it's a beautiful creation of God. They study it, they really can't understand it. They study thousands of women. They cannot still understand today the sexuality of women because each woman is uniquely made and different sexually. We must develop a right mindset, a holy mindset, a godly mindset towards sex. And we must be careful not to raise our daughters with this slavery mentality. We must teach them, if don't marry a man that we need you to perform in bed in order not to go out of the marriage, we must teach that to our children. We must raise our daughters. Don't marry a man that can only be kept, that we only keep the marriage covenant, covenant if you wear sexy dress. And I don't, like I said earlier, what, what can be more sexier than the fact that you are seeing your wife nude? You are now still saying she still has to wear this. Now, if you, if you want it, there is no problem. But it's a deception to say that that is what will keep the man. Did you know that? Even if your spouse deny you sex, it is even not a sufficient reason to go into adultery. People say that God will judge every adulterer. Every adulterer. A pastor called me some time ago. A pastor, he called me 
And then he told me by his own word, he's a pastor. He said, sir, I'm a pastor and I've been following your post. My wife doesn't like sex. And because of that, I've been involved in adultery. And as I'm speaking to you, I'm under pressure again to go for adultery. And I said, sir, I think he said, no, 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 no. He said, sir, there's nothing you say that I don't know. I'm also a pastor. So I could, I could only encourage him. I said, please, well, this thing is sinful. It is not an You see, it is the devil that is telling him lies. That without sex, without his wife giving him sex, he must get it somewhere else. It is the lie of the devil. There are men that are not married. There are men that choose not to even marry. There are single people that they are keeping themselves. There are people who have had sex before, who gave their life to Jesus, and they are keeping themselves. It is the lie of the devil. There is no reason for adultery. No reason for adultery. So let's not make slaves of women. The Bible calls women a helpmate. That's the name God gave to women. You know, it was Adam. Who called her woman? The female component of man was called help meet by God. Adam called the woman man, eh, the, 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 the female woman. And then later on, change it to Eve. Adam, Adam's name. Woman, why? Because she was taken out of man. Of, of all men. Now, but look at the name of God. A suitable helpmate. That's function. So the name that God called the woman is a functional name. It tells you of her purpose. So she wasn't a woman looking for help. She wasn't a woman looking for favor. She wasn't a woman looking for love. She's just, she's a woman created with capacity to contribute to the fulfillment of the plan of God. She wasn't somebody who is lonely and needed a man. It was the man who needed the woman and not the other way around. I pray the Lord give you understanding. Thank you for joining to watch um, this video live. It will be relayed. On YouTube, for those of you who will be watching on YouTube or who are watching now on YouTube, you may want to subscribe to the channel and share the link of the video. God bless you. Thank you. My name once again is Olushegun Mokuolu. God bless you all.